I'm Jeff Juno from Leduc, Alberta, diagnosed with MS roughly four years ago. For close to a year, I could not shake back problems and back pain and lower back pain, thinking it's got to be a pinched nerve, it's got to be chiropractic, something. My feet went a little numb, but I rode it off to buying new hockey skates. I still couldn't shake the pain and went through the chiropractic, the massage, painkillers, and my general doctor got a hold of the Department of Neurology and had me sent up to the U of A for that. And that's when I ran into Dr. Power, who happened to be on call. And we did two more MRIs, a CAT scan, chest X-ray, and then a lumbar puncture. And then shortly after that, he said, I'm pretty sure that it would be MS. I'm Chris Power. I'm a neurologist here at the University of Alberta. I'm a clinician scientist and I'm supported by Alberta Innovates as a senior scholar. I'm a neurologist. I work in the multiple sclerosis clinic, so I'm very interested in, in the disease mechanisms underlying MS because we don't really know what the cause of MS is. So for this study, we took um, sort of a broad systems biology approach to understanding a common neurological disease in that we uh, at, took a window on the whole human genome and looked at how it was controlled through microRNAs. And that led us to a complex of molecules in the brain called neurosteroids, which we found were actually deficient in MS patients. And as a result, we were able to test that concept uh, or validate it in different models and identify a specific neurosteroid that appeared to alleviate the features of multiple sclerosis. Neurosteroids are a whole complex of molecules in the brain that have not been related to um, inflammation in the brain, which is the chief determinant of disease in MS. So that connection's never been made before. So it all opens up lots of new therapeutic avenues. For many years, the strategy in treating MS has been to control overactivated white cells in the blood. And that strategy has met with limited success to date. So this opens up sort of an endogenous brain process that we might be able to direct so that we can prevent damage and maybe even uh, repair the damaged brain, which is a very exciting possibility because we know the brain to some extent has the capacity to regenerate the, um, this, uh, the myelin around axons. MS is a disease that's chiefly defined by loss of myelin around the nerve fibers. It's very analogous to stripping an, an, an electrical wire of its insulation. And as a consequence, the, the conduction of electricity is diminished, and after a while the, the wire uh, rusts and it breaks. And that's, that's what happens in MS. You lose the insulation around the nerve, and the axon is damaged eventually, and it doesn't work as well. So that results in the sort of disabilities that MS patients get inability to see, inability to walk, poor balance, sometimes even you know, difficulty with concentration or memory. Now, neurosteroids, actually an interesting parallel, neurosteroids had been recognized for some time to influence mood. Um, we, uh, there's been some interest in using them to treat mood disorders. Mood disorders are a very common problem in MS. About 50% of patients with MS, 30 to 50% of MS patients have some difficulty with depression. So, not that far-fetched, but we're thinking that, that neurosteroids may have bigger effects, not just affecting mood, but maybe help prevent, preventing damage to cells and perhaps even allowing them to recover. I'm thankful I'm not in the chair and not with a cane, and there's things I can still do and still love to do, and there's that hope that I won't be in a chair until old age puts me there. If you want somebody to change your oil, you don't ask the guy pumping gas, he asked the mechanic. And Dr. Power is the mechanic. So it's, I'm extremely lucky to have gotten Dr. Power because he is in the lab and working towards it and he's so passionate about finding something. 